Hi folks, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and the third episode of G1000 tutorial series. If you haven't seen the first two episodes, these tutorials are designed to build on knowledge. I highly suggest you to go and check the first two episodes. Everything in this tutorial will make more sense if you do so. And if you want to get notified for the future episodes, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications. So what we are doing today is we are looking into how do you plan a flight using the G1000's navigation display. So before doing it, where do you generate a flight plan? Obviously Microsoft Flight Simulator has an in-game flight planning before you load into the aircraft. But that's not what we are focusing today. Actually we are going to take a look at an external source which generates a flight plan for you and then using that data you can enter that information into your navigation display to have a complete flight plan in your G1000 unit. So let's go and check that out for a second and then we'll come back to the plane and start entering our flight plan into the navigation display. What I'm talking about is this web page that's called Simbrief. For any new flight simmer out there, this is a very common flight planning source that flight simmers are using. It has a lot of great functions. In this tutorial we won't be able to cover all of it, but I will briefly touch base on the necessary information that you need to enter to generate a proper flight plan to use. When you log in, you have to go to this page, my flight plan, and then from there click new flight. This will bring you to this screen to enter your information. First thing you need to do, this is optional, you can leave it blank, but I like to enter it to give your airline code, let's just say TK and then 007. Simbrief has a lot of functions. If you are interested in seeing a tutorial on how to plan a flight and how to read the operational flight plan after you create your flight, uh, just let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to make a tutorial specifically on Simbrief to let you know how you can generate a flight plan and how you can use it in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But for today, what we are doing is we are going to depart from Echo Delta Lima Papa, which is Paderborn Airport in Germany, as you see at the back, and we are going to Hanover, Echo Delta Delta Victor. Okay, when you enter your departure and arrival, Simbrief will automatically generate your route down here, as you see. Uh, the airframe, this is for fuel calculation, you can leave it empty, but I usually enter the information here so that I can take a look at my payload and fuel and decide what kind of payload I have, how much fuel I need, so it's, it's helpful. So Cessna 172 is our aircraft for today's flight and I want to change couple things here. So what Simbrief does is it usually connects to Matar, gets the weather information and tries to guess with its best knowledge what runway it should assign for departure and arrival and as you see it assigned us runway 24 for departure and runway 27 for arrival but I want to change this because I have some material for other runways that I want to cover so departure will be runway 6 and arrival is runway, runway 9 left so when you plug that information one last thing that I want to change is the altitude Simbrief assigns you an automatically generated cruising altitude uh, but I want to change it because for today's flight I want to stick to flight level 050 which is 5000 feet and remember this is a general aviation rule if you are traveling to east your altitude should be an odd thousand fly up plus 500 which means one three five seven nine so on so forth plus 500 if you are traveling west your altitude needs to be an even thousand which is two four six eight thousand plus five hundred this is to have a altitude difference between two possible flights or potential flights using the same airway 
but going opposite directions so that they don't crash into each other okay so we have all the information we need now we can click and generate our operational flight plan wait a second and it will generate us generate it for us as you see it shows our destination and origin and it also gives us an alternate route if we have to deviate from our current destination for any reason that's our alternate airport that we can travel to to land uh, it gives you the estimated air time and the block time of the flight zero fuel weight of your aircraft based on the aircraft selection and the take of weight and how much fuel you need these are all useful information that we will use maybe not in this aircraft but for uh, for the future aircrafts that I am planning for future tutorials okay but for now all we need is our waypoints and we have them here so if you take a look at two of them they have letters and a number so the first one is usually your SID standard instrument departure and the last one is usually your STAR which is standard terminal approach route or standard terminal arrival route so this will make sense when we take a look at some other information here in a second and when you scroll down to the map it also plots your course and what direction you are going to take from departure to arrival before even pla planning uh, or entering the flight into the G1000 unit I want to show you a couple more things uh, which will all make sense for the future tutorials as well and what I want to show is the charts so I have two charts open here this is our departure chart from Paderborn we are using runway 6 and as you see here if I can get rid of that um, oops okay small mistake there sorry about that but if you take a look at this it says Warburg 9x departure so this is an old chart but with the new navigation data that's available for today this translates to Warburg 1 x-ray which is our star uh, SID that's displayed here so what this means this is the airport here and this is the route to our first waypoint which is WRB you can also see here and this literally tells us what to do when we are departing from the airport and how we can navigate to this waypoint obviously today we are using GPS but if you decide to use some other navigation sources like VOR stations this will make a lot of sense when we go down into a little bit more detail obviously I won't be able to cover everything about how to read a departure or approach chart but again if you are interested in learning those drop me a comment down below and I will be happy to make a tutorial on how to read charts so let's take a look some, at some details so for the departure if you scroll down it says on 055 bearing from pad NDB to distance 2.7 pad so this means from the runway which is 06 and the runway heading is 055 it says basically travel 2.7 miles from the NDB away from the NDB and then make a right turn to heading 077 and it says after that track that to a distance of 5.6 miles so that means over to here from that same station and this is an NDB station which is a non-directional -direc beacon uh, up to 5.6 miles and it says from there turn right to heading 124 to incept, intercept Warburg VRB uh, WRB or Whiskey Romeo Bravo VOR station that is our way out of the airport uh, a good analogy here is to think this as a as the roads you are taking when you are let's say 
driving to work out of your neighborhood this is your route to the entrance of your neighborhood or to the closest main road and then from this main road you take the main roads or highways until your destination and for when you reach to the destination let's say you use a highway exit main road exit uh, and take the side roads to to your final destination so this is a good analogy i like to uh, use when explaining what these seed stars and airways mean but there's a lot to it so as i said if you want to learn about reading a chart dro drop me a comment okay so this is our departure and i think we covered it pretty good and this is used by pilots when they are doing their departure or takeoff briefings so let's go and check our arrival chart and wow this looks a little bit more intimidating there is a lot of text there is a lot of numbers and I know you will say uh, what in the world all these mean well okay it's not that hard when you know where you're looking at and I'll try to explain as simple as I can for the sake of this tutorial so when we get to Hanover it says we are taking WRB5 Romeo into let's say runway 9 left I believe yes and when you check this chart uh, this is exactly that star that will take us into Hanover and it starts with this rowback waypoint and it literally says take heading 077 at 4000 feet all the way into here which is Desim and over here when it says 1 you see that 3000 here it says we need to be at 3000 feet to intercept our initial approach fix which is Desim and you, you can also see it here too so this is where we should expect to capture the localizer into the runway we start we have to be at 3000 to properly intercept the localizer and capture it and then from there the ILS system in our G1000 unit will start to take us down all the way into the runway another thing that we need to note here is these are the distances which we between each approach fix and this one here which is Hotel Alpha Delta is our final approach fix so this is our short final oh, I'm sorry uh, Hotel Alpha Delta over here is our final approach fix which is our short final into the runway and this is going to be important when we are descending this decision altitude which is outside of the parentheses and decision height which is in the parentheses will become important what this basically means is when you are at 367 feet based on your barometric altitude or 200 feet based on your radio altitude you have to have a visual of the runway in sight to continue landing otherwise if you don't have any usual in real life you have to execute a go around or a missed approach and the details of that is up here which I will not cover in this tutorial hopefully this all makes sense one last thing I want to point is this small bit of information here it is showing us that we have a glide slope into the runway and it's 3% and these are some reference speeds and how many feet we need to descend per minute based on this reference speed to successfully follow the glide slope all the way into the runway I think it's enough information for now let's just go back to the aircraft and start to plan our G1000 unit and at the end we will go back to the charts and see how well those align with our entered flight plan into the unit okay we are in the cockpit our aircraft is powered on and as you see we are sitting here with no active flight plan in display I want to declutter this map a little bit um, let's just 
we can you can put the topographical information to see the mountains and hills around you but for now I'll just not display it and this is the weather information from next red weather source and but it clutters it a lot so let's just remove it I'm just going back to the buttons and functions just as a reminder uh, and let's just yeah go back go back one more time hit the declutter button to remove some of the information so that we just see a little bit clear on the map okay how you enter your flight plan if you remember the first video we discussed about the functions of these buttons and knobs and there is a button called FPL here which stands for the flight plan we are going to press this and remember if you are planning your flight you have to use the unit on the right which is your multifunction display or your navigation display this one over here is your PFD which is your primary flight display in other words and you cannot use this because it will if I go there it will not give you the same uh, flight plan menu if you uh, try to do it here so let's go back so now we need to bring up the cursor and to do that we have to press this knob and it will bring the cursor and starts flashing which means it's ready to accept information so like before you use the inner dial to scroll and you use the outer dial to enter data so let's see if I start scrolling uh, I just entered this before that's why you see the honey over here but we will do it from scratch so first letter is obviously E you scroll one to the left right I'm sorry and our next letter is Delta and then Lima which is right here it's a little bit annoying to enter it from here because you have to continuously scroll on these two knobs but well that's the way to do it in a G1000 unit let's just go Papa and Paderborn it will display the airport's name as you when you enter the whole phrase or for whole IKEA, IKEA code of the airport press enter now you have your departure or uh, yeah you have your departure airport pl uh, programmed next thing we need to enter our arrival airport so we do the same thing cursor is flashing scroll one it will bring this echo delta and we need to put another delta and then the last letter will be Victor for Hanover Airport there you have it press enter now our departure and arrival airports are programmed and as you see here if I go back for a second and zoom out you'll see that this gives us a direct line from one airport to another so this can be a VFR flight that you want to have GPS uh, functionality but today we are looking to an IFR flight therefore we have to go back in and start selecting our departure and arrival as we saw in the chart so to do that you click that procedures button and as you see in the menu select approach select arrival and select departure select departure is the one we are looking for using the inner knob scroll to the button and when you get to select departure it's when it's highlighted hit enter and now it's showing us that Visky Romeo Bravo 1 X-ray is selected by default and if we go back and check the flight plan in Simbrief that's exactly what we need to plug there plug in there so but just to show you how you select the others when it's flashing go to the outer knob and start scrolling and you will see a bunch of other standard instrument departures programmed into the GPS to select the one you want come over it by scrolling and then hit enter and it will enter it and it also displays which runway is associated with this uh, SID, the standard instrument departure so next up we need to bring the cursor back by pressing on the button scroll back one and come to load and highlight it and enter when you do so if you see what has changed now we have a departure like the analogy I described out of our neighborhood to the nearest main road 
and it added some more waypoints LP100, LP104. So this is how you enter your um, departure to your flight plan. So now we need to do the same thing for our arrival but to do before doing that let's just go up there to our arrival airport. How you scroll or um, move the screen around is you click on the range button and you'll see a small cur cursor starting the flash and when you hover over to the edges of this knob you'll see some arrows and pan map is displayed. This is how you pan the map. As you see the cursor started to move up. If I go to the right it starts to come to the right and this is how you navigate uh, or pan your display or your map in other words. Let's go all the way up to our arrival airport and bring it roughly to the middle of the screen and yeah so go back to procedures now this time we are selecting selecting our um, approach hit enter oh I'm sorry let's go back one uh, one second first we need to select our arrival before our approach hit enter so the arrival we are going to use, which is the standard terminal arrival route, as I described here, is Victor Romeo Bravo 5 Romeo. Let's see if it's in there, because I have a older AREC cycle, cycle uh, in Simbrief. So it's flashing, let's scroll button, and luckily Victor Romeo Bravo 5 Romeo is here. So let's select that one, hit enter, and it says runway 9 left, that's exactly what we run, want to have. So bring the cursor back by pressing one more time, scroll back one and then enter when the load is flashing. So as you see now, it entered the rollback waypoint and it's not a direct line from Whiskey Romeo Bravo VOR all the way into the airport. So this, this is part of the arrival. So now we need to select our approach. Approach in other words means how we are planning to descend our airplane into the runway and there are multiple approaches that can be used ILS approach is instrument landing system approach this is literally your GPS unit controlling your vertical and lateral navigation to bring you nicely at that 3% glide slope all the way into the runway this is mostly used when the visibili visibility is very low and there is no uh, ground visibility when you are up in the air and you're not sure if there are any hills or mountains around. ILS is the one that you wanna you want to use. On the other hand, uh, we have an NDB approach which I'm not going to cover. It has a lot of details that needs to be explained before I can talk about it and the RNAV approach. RNAV is close to an ILS, it's a radio approach but this time your GPS unit doesn't control your vertical uh, navigation. In other words, your vertical profile. You have to control your vertical navigation by uh, descending either using the autopilot and the vertical speed mode that we, I explained in the last tutorial or the flight level change mode and bring your aircraft down and the GPS system will control your lateral navigation in terms of the compass navigation uh, the horizontal navigation to keep you on track and align with the runway but today we are going to take a look at the ILS approach so ILS 9 left let's select that one and let's double check that it's 9 left yes it is and now what we need to do is bring the cursor like before once more go down do not activate it yet uh, we will activate the approach when we get close to that airport but this is not the time to do it all we want to do is just to load it to our flight plan so that we have that information and now as you see voila something has changed so now it's taking us putting us through a traffic pattern and taking us into the runway but if you s remember the chart this is not 
looking quite similar to what we have selected. Let's go back to the chart for a second and take a look at it. This is actually the top uh, approach route for the very same ILS approach to nine way, runway 909 nine left. So from Visky Romeo Bravo VOR it's taking us to Robeg and from Robeg it's circling around to CEL VOR or this is an NDB station I'm sorry when you look at the frequency uh, you can tell by just looking at uh, NDB stations doesn't have a decimal point uh, for the frequency and then it's bringing us in by tracking this NEE NIE uh, November India Echo VOR station all the way into the runway so this is another way of doing it and this perfectly aligns with the chart if you are interested in seeing in the other van, one we need to select a different uh, transition point and let's just see how it's done uh, let's go back to the procedures we go down there select approach enter instead of that transition if you select and go to scroll down and go to row bag it should be the one we are looking for and bring the cursor back load it there you have it now this exactly looks like the chart we have checked let's go back for a second and if I can move the screen so that we see both screens side by side as much as we possibly can that's not what I meant but let me just get close to the edge of the screen and maybe just move this to that side a little bit it should do if you take a look at this it's taking row bag coming directly this one does something different so looks like this is not the one we're looking for as well so let's just take a look at the approach one more time and see what else we have select that one select that one and if you see there there is another row back I'm not sure which one I selected before but I'll select the top one to see if it changes anything bring the cursor back scroll back once twice load it so that's the one we selected let's go back let's select the button one to see if it changes anything scroll go down select the second row bag hit enter and see it shows a different waypoint now which is decim and if you check the chart that's what we are looking for hopefully this is the one we are looking for let's go and load it and see if it anything if, if it changes anything voila now we are looking to exactly what we have seen on the chart if I zoom in a little bit more and get the cursor over here so that we see it a little bit better yeah row bag one way point here take a right turn to decim row bag one way point here which is that 082 radial take a right turn be at 3000 feet and then all the way into the runway so now one last thing I want to cover here is let's go back to the flight plan for a second and as you see the vertical profile is sort of messed up check that Robeg is showing 8000 feet and that's not what we want although at the moment the VNAV in any of the aircrafts and Microsoft flight simulator is not working properly and this might be part of the reason but let's see if we can by any chance correct that and remember our cruise altitude was 5000 feet let's see here okay looks like we can change it so at Robeg if we look at the chart we need to be at 4000 or above I mean it doesn't state above but 4000 is a good estimation because from Robeg to actually let's just change this first and then take a look at one more thing go back to here 
oops one two three four thousand it's hope yes it's there now so bring the cursor back scroll down and see it's still not here let's see if we can change this as well oops no that's not what I wanted uh, please don't change anything clear that bring the cursor be very careful when you are clicking these buttons here if you accidentally clear hit the clear button I don't know if this is a bug but it deletes the pl flight pl plan completely and I don't want to do it so let's see yeah it looks like we cannot change this but it's okay we know where we have to be at this waypoint and we can manually manage that vertical profile one last thing though is look at our cruising altitude we don't want to be at 1700 feet and if you will take a look at the departure chart um, it says at or above 1700 which is correct here and take a 77 which is here it's also correct that 77 track for four nautical miles and it says you have to be at 3500 or above so this is another I think bug that Microsoft Flight Simulator has which also needs to be corrected hopefully in the near future so let's plug 3500 here and remember we are traveling uh, towards east and north like northeast that means our altitude needs to be an odd thousand plus 500 feet and 3500 fits perfectly so okay so we did that one let's hit enter it's accepted and let's check it doesn't state any altitude for WRB but our cruise altitude is 5000 so I'm going to enter it to the RDB to have a vertical profile even if the VNAV is not working we can use it for reference so 5000 and we will continue 5000 all the way to Robeg uh, not all the way to Robeg it's actually 44 nautical miles and we have to think about where we want to descend which I will cover in the next tutorial how you calculate your descent based on your vertical profile because the autopilot is not doing it at the moment and ATC the in-game ATC has uh, some problems as well when it comes to this vertical profile and when it when it's assigning you altitudes uh, on the on your route it's not doing it quite ideally or quite right so hopefully they will fix it as well so let's just plan our aircraft for uh, departure our initial climb altitude will be obviously that's 1700 feet but I'm gonna put 4000 3500 which is uh, the second step of our departure and let's plan for that and then we will increase this to 5000 when we reach to that waypoint and the other thing if you don't remember from the first tutorial now we have this green arrow here but that's not what we want this is not going to serve us any good in terms of navigation because this is VOR1 and it's using VOR radio that's here uh, to track and we want a GPS uh, tracking which is right this one GPS en route okay so that's plugged in there couple things to remember PFD button wind information option 3 having this here is quite handy and looks like we have four knots of headwind because we will be departing towards that way and this is the best or this is the most I like to have on the screen the other thing is I like to put the bearing over here from the GPS so that I have a visual representation of what kind of distance I need to travel to the next waypoint this will become handy when we are planning our descent in the next episode of the tutorial series and bearing too if you want to have a backup navigation source if we go back to the chart for a second if you take a look at these frequencies it states 108.5 for PAD 
Papa Alpha Delta uh, VOR station or there is another one which is 354 this is an NDB station non-directional beacon we can plug either one to our nav radio to have a backup navigation source if something goes wrong with our GPS so this is a real life scenario but I like to keep it as close to the real life as possible to have some realism in the simulator so let's just try to plug 108.5 here so the inner one will change the whole numbers and the outer one will change the decimal numbers so it's decimal 85 no decimal 5 I'm sorry my bad let's see and let's to put the bearing so no data obviously it is not capturing anything um, let's try 5.5 five to see if it brings anything oh there you go so 0 0.5 nautical miles so this actually will now become our second or backup navigation source if we lose the GPS for any reason and the other thing I want to do before we taxi to the runway is to set the heading to the runway heading so that we have a backup for the two for our departure and runway heading is 055 and you can see it probably somewhere here uh, yeah 055 as you see this is the runway heading so that's there and I think we are ready to taxi next tutorial we are going to take off and go all the way to the arrival and we will take a look at how we navigate there remember the autopilot functions and then we will pro we will execute an ILS approach and take a look at how you execute an ILS approach into a runway and this will become very handy for the future tutorials if you have the knowledge right now because as we go through the tutorials my plan is to advance the game and step up the game from propellers to turboprop aircrafts all the way into airliners and I like to make this tutorial series long enough to show a new flight simulator how you can use the simulator and learn something and enjoy flight simming to the fullest alright guys I think this is going to be it for this episode of the tutorial series if you are interested in seeing more please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications and if you have any comments or any requests that you want to share with me please drop me a comment before I close the video I reached to 20 subscribers this is a big milestone for me I know it's not a big number for so many other youtubers out there but I like to thank that 20 subscribers who took the time to subscribe to my channel and it's also telling me that you guys are enjoying the content I highly appreciate it and it helps me uh, a lot to keep going with this tutorial series okay until next time take care of yourself guys see you in the next video